Hello, hello, and welcome back to Mona's Rants. Uh, my God, made it through the first week, you guys. Fifth day today for the 30-day challenge. Very, very excited. Happy Friday. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Uh, we're going to jump right into it. So uh, did you guys see Dave Chappelle's 27-minute special? Uh, it's streaming on uh, YouTube for free. You guys should totally check it out. Uh, very passionate. Uh, I'm going to say that Dave Chappelle... Uh, new special, he Nanette the fuck out of it. That's what he did. If you don't know what Nanette is, you should check it out. It's a brilliant, brilliant stand-up special on Netflix by a very, very funny comic by the name of Hannah Gatsby. Uh, she did Nanette. It was literally a groundbreaking stand-up special. Uh, a lot of comics, mostly male com- comedians, were like, it's not a stand-up special. It's like a TED Talk or whatever. Um, and that's fine. They're entitled to their opinion. Um, but it was groundbreaking nonetheless. It was very moving. It uh, changed me uh, in many, many great ways where it gave me courage to come out on stage and talk about stuff that I would never really had the courage to talk about. So thank you, uh, Hannah Gatsby, uh, uh, for putting out Nanette. Uh, changed my life. Thank you very much for that. Um, Dave Chappelle's 27 minute uh, special, very passionate. Uh, not a lot of jokes uh, because he's talking about the murder of George Floyd uh, and the injustice that continues to follow about p- p- police brutality, about racism in this country uh, against African Americans, and, and, and rightfully so. Uh, and it, it was incredibly touching um, and very passionate. Um, you know, it wasn't, uh, I, I felt that, you know, of course he had some of the jokes in there, uh, that he tried to do, but he talked about, I mean, he talked about George Floyd, of course, he talked about Candace Owen, uh, and her stinky pussy. Uh, he talked about eight forty eight eight minutes and 46 seconds, uh, which is uh, how long it took, uh, when, um, uh, Derek Showman was, had his knee on, uh, George Floyd's neck and, uh, eight minutes and 40 seconds is how long it took for George Floyd to die. Uh, and that, uh, and he said that, you know, Chappelle said that 846, uh, 846 is also the time of his birth on his birth certificate. I mean, it's uh, pretty chilling and pretty kind of alarming when you start hearing those kind of numbers. Um, and, uh, and the, uh, I felt like, you know, I, I, when I watched Nanette, um, I, I'll tell you what it did for me. And I think I, I think I also hear that from a lot of female comments. Hi. Oh, yes. Thank you, James. I'm waiting for that, too. I'm going to put that up. I'm waiting for I'm working on my stand up special. But thank you very much. My comedy album is actually out today. If you guys want to check it out, uh, it is uh, now streaming uh, on uh Spotify, it's on, um, it's called Shake It Off, which is my last name. Uh, so you can, uh, my new uh, comedy album is called uh, Shake, which is my last name, Shake It Off. I got it. I got inspired by Taylor Swift, okay? Uh, and that's why. And you can check it out. It's on uh, monashake.com. Uh, it's now there. The links are there. You guys can follow it and listen to it and um yeah, it's my uh, first comedy album ever. I'm very proud of it. And, uh, of course, continue to strive to be better and be a better comic. Um, sp- speaking about uh, uh, being a better comic, Hannah Gatsby definitely helped me uh, become, give me a lot of courage to talk about it. I, I, I think I've mentioned and touched upon it. I, I come from um, a lot of uh, violence in my household, come from a lot of trauma, uh, and she kind of made it okay for me to be like, yeah, as a female comic, it's okay to uh, go up there and talk about it. I mean, she literally talks about her rape on stage. If you watch it, it's uh, the first, uh, the, the, you know, the first like 30 minutes, 40 minutes is just so solid and hysterical. Uh, and then the last in the bit, she just really just starts going into it and it's fucking jarring and raw and just like gut wrenching and just uh, was so emotional. Uh, it made me cry, but it was so powerful. It was so powerful. It changed change the game, change the game for me as a stand-up comic to be like, oh shit, you can still do a stand-up special. You can still talk about your shit. And, and you, she gave me permission to, it's okay to talk about trauma in a way where you don't have to be funny. Like, holy shit, what a concept because the stand-up comics were also always, you know, on, uh, when we, especially the cameras on or we're on stage, we're always expected to be funny. We're always expected to just turn out jokes, uh, and not really kind of given the space to talk about our 
lives and traumas and the pains that we grew up with, uh, which I think for a lot of stand comics, um, you know, uh, becomes very, very unhealthy because they, they're not really processing it or they don't really know how to bring those traumas and demons on stage. And those demons end up taking control of them. And look, I, I personally have at least three, uh, ma- uh, three comedians who have committed suicide, uh, because they, don't know how to deal with their demons. They didn't know how to deal with their demons. And um, it's very, very heartbreaking. Um, but um, I, I think I think what Hannah Gatsby has done uh, for comedians, and especially female comics like myself, is uh, give us permission. Um, you know, I, I know I know a lot of people uh, maybe had their own personal struggles, you know, who are not stand-up comics or not artists who, uh, you know, have fears about doing something because, and I think it all boils down to permission. Like, do you want to give yourself the permission to do the things that you want to do uh, to overcome those fears? And I think for me, it, it did that. And I and I thank Hannah Gatsby for doing that. Hi, Tim. Nice to see you. Um, I think... Um, for for female comics, okay, we are high. Uh, for female comics, we have this. Uh, we are given a perimeter uh, of things we can or cannot talk about. And if you're uh, a, a, a woman of color uh, like myself, and you're a female stand comic, those perimeters get even smaller. Uh, we are expected to talk about issues, uh, just issues, just like oh, just talk to me about you know, like what it was like for you to grow up in the environment that you did. In my case, it's Pakistan, growing up in a conservative Muslim household. Like you're just kind of put in these boxes that you have to just check these boxes of only things they can talk about. And anything outside of that, people are not interested or they will demean you for it or um, you're ridiculed for it. Because God forbid, if you're ever a multidimensional person, God forbid, because you're only two dimensional, right? You're only supposed to check these boxes for people. And then you can't really talk about shit the way male comics want. For for instance, uh, if a, if a male, male comics will always go up there uh, and hump chairs and uh, hump stools to show to show you the world how they fuck. Uh, but if a woman goes up there, like myself, a female comic goes up and starts talking about um, sexual things or her sexual experiences, uh, you know, the comic that's going to follow her will always, usually a male, who would make a comment of like, oh, wow, oh, you're down to fuck? Oh, after the show, maybe we can hook up and exchange numbers and get together. There's always that thing like women are, female comics are just always vulnerable to that. We're always set to, you know, because we stepped out of a box. Because we stepped out of a box of talking about our sexuality. So now male comics uh, or even men in the audience have feel like they have this freedom or access to you that they have access to your body or to your sexuality just because you went up there and talked about your sex life okay but male comics don't have to do that male comics uh get pussy thrown at them okay constantly like that's what they're getting or if they're gay maybe you know uh, i think even gay comics uh male or female are you know vulnerable to a lot of you know, uh, demeaning and a, a lot of bullshit and female comics, definitely, God forbid. I mean, look, anytime I know that when I go up there and I talk about anything sexual, especially if within my own people, they're like South Asians or Middle Eastern or Muslim, and God forbid I bring up anything sexual and God forbid if I talk anything sexually related, you know, I immediately am pegged as a sexual comic. I am nothing else. I could talk about 50 other things, but none of those things would matter Because I talked about sex for maybe five minutes. You know, that's the only part that stands out to them. And I, uh, I, I am, you know, looked at as that in in, in my community, in uh, a lot of the Middle Eastern Muslim comedians that Muslim people that know me, uh, they're just like, oh, Mona gets dirty. Mona gets really dirty. And it's just like, I'm not getting dirty. I'm just talking about sexual things that you probably also experience, but you're too afraid to come out and say it because you want to be a good Muslim person or you want to be a good Pakistani, a good Middle Eastern person or whatever that uh you know that eyes wide shut bullshit that you're trying to pull in front of your family members and your friends but you know us as female uh, as comics especially as female side of comics when we go up there we talk about our truth and you know i refuse to be 
put down in different boxes. I refuse to stand up there and check your fucking boxes. I don't give a fuck about your boxes. I'm going to talk about what the fuck I want to talk about. I'm going to talk about it in the way I want to fucking talk about it. If I want to go up there and curse my ass off, I will curse my ass off. If I want to be clean, I want to be clean. If I want to talk about sexual stuff, I'll talk about sexual stuff. If I want to talk about religion, I want to talk about, which always is a fucking hot topic, by the way, every fucking time, especially in the Muslims crowd. Dude, you can't do religious jokes. You can't talk about religion. You can't, especially about Islam. Can't talk about Islam. People lose their fucking shit, man. They don't want to hear any kind of criticism. You know, they want to, they barely want to hear criticism about, you know, when I, what, when I talk shit about, like when I do my virgin jokes or do I, my, my, my suicide jokes. My suicide jokes are fucking killers, you guys. You should, and you know where my suicide jokes are? In my comedy album, which you should totally check out. It's on monashake.com. I put the link up there for you guys. You should check it out. Tell me what you think. If you're on Amazon, I would love for you to leave me a review. This is a shameless plug. Please check it out. You know, I get shit for that. I get shit for stepping outside the box because I am not what they're expecting me to be, to be a good, you know, a good Muslim comic, to be a good female comic. Fuck that shit. I live in America, okay? I'm going to exercise my First Amendment. I'm going to exercise my freedom. That's what the fuck I, what I'm going to do because I fucking sacrificed way too much and worked way too hard, you know, to be put in these bullshit ass boxes that people expect me to be, especially my own fucking people and even my own fucking family members. Fuck that shit. I'm not fucking down for that, okay? I am my own person and this is who I am. Take it or leave it. You don't like it. You can switch the fucking channel. I don't give a fuck. Um... Male versus female comics. It really got me thinking, you know? I started watching Dave Chappelle, and uh, it really got me thinking, man. I was like, wow, Dave Dave talks about a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff. You know, his, his commentary uh, on celebrity culture, when you watch the special, I don't know if you've seen it yet, his, his, and, and I, think it, I think he's absolutely right about that. He's absolutely right about the fact that, you know, Don Lemon of CNN was calling out uh, all the celebrities, where the celebrities were, uh, to, to speak about police brutality, to speak about George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery. Um, and, you know, I was sitting back and I was just like, yeah, yeah, where are the celebrities? And then I heard Dave's commentary about why would a celebrity's point of view matter? Why? Why are we such a celebrity culture, uh, you know, uh, driven culture where a celebrity's point of view is like the ultimate point of view? And we have to hear it because it holds so much importance. And I really appreciate, um, you know, uh, I appreciate what Dave came out and said. And he said, he said, you know, he's like, I'll quote you. I'll quote you what exactly he said. And I, I thought it was really fucking good. OK. And I and I have mad respect. Uh, uh, I have mad respect for what. Uh, you know, Dave said, um, he said, look, he said, you know, why, why do you want to, he's like, uh, he's like, do you, he's like, answer me. Do you want to see a celebrity right now? He said, does it matter about celebrity? No, this is the streets talking for themselves. They don't need me right now. I kept my mouth shut and I'll keep my mouth shut, but don't think my silence is complicit. I respect that. I fucking mad respect because you know what? Not every time that something that, that the average human being, the average person is experiencing, that's not the same experience that celebrities are having. Celebrities immediately have an upper hand. Okay. If Dave Chappelle gets pulled over by a cop, he has immediate respect. If Chris Rock gets over by, by a cop, he has immediate respect by a cop. Okay, because he's Dave Chappelle and they're Chris Rock. They recognize him. They're they're famous. They probably are fans of these guys. Okay, but if you're Ahmad Arbery or you're George Floyd, you don't have that same privilege. You just don't. Okay, and that's the fucking truth. Okay, and I really have a lot of respect for uh, for Dave for saying that because that is the that is the fucking truth. You know, I, I mean, just because. I mean, look, you know, if you're going to talk about celebrities, well, let's talk about fucking influencers. You know, first of all, I don't know if you guys saw this, but there are influencers who are trying to be in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter and they painted their faces black. Please stop it. Please, for the love of God, that is not showing solidarity. That is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. You want to fucking show solidarity? Go fucking march. You want to show solidarity? Donate money uh, to Black Lives Matter and charities that are that they're recommending. You wanna you wanna you know contribute? Fucking go and like support uh, local black businesses. That's the way of showing solidarity. Not by fucking fa- painting your fucking face black or brown. Like what the fuck? Who told you that? I mean, you know what it really got me thinking? I was thinking about these influencers and I was like, man, 
Uh, yes, thank you, Tim. Yeah, you should look around. It really got me thinking about the influencers. And I was like, man, once this influence, influence of culture dies, these people are so fucking dumb. And they don't really have any other skill set. They're really going to be like, they're going to struggle finding a job. They're not going to be able to fucking find a job. Who's going to hire these dumb asses? Oh, what are you good at? Suffies? Oh my god, I'm just like really good at suffies. Like, and I like, I like show solidarity by like painting my face black or brown. Because <laughs> I think it's smart. It's not fucking smart. You're fucking stupid. Don't do that shit. It's fucking offensive. It's the opposite of showing solidarity. It's it's offensive is what the fuck it is. People are outraged over black and brown face. Don't do that shit, okay? Just don't do it. You're trying to go for the more tan look? Go for the fucking tan look. Don't call that shit solidarity because it's not, okay? Do the other things that I was just mentioning. And as a matter of fact, go on blacklivesmatter.com and they'll tell you exactly how to be an ally. How about that, okay? That's, that's way better than even the shit that's coming out of my mouth. So do that, okay? Um, I, um, I just think that, um, look, I, I'm not black. I would never know what it's like to be black in America. I, I wouldn't, and ne- never would I fucking ever claim, uh, to be, to know what it is like to be black, to walk in the streets, to be fearful of your life all the time, uh, to be scared of cops all the time. Like I've never looked at cops once and be like, I'm scared. I'm scared for my life or I'm scared for my safety. I've never, I've never felt that, but black Americans don't have that same experience because that's my privilege, right? That's my privilege. If you've never had that feeling, you're in a privileged position, okay? And you don't just have to be white to be privileged that way. You can still be a brown person and still have that level of privilege, okay? Um, but um, I have firsthand experienced racism in Los Angeles. I mean, I grew up in New York City. And, you know, in New York City, we we have, you know, you know, major melting pot. Everybody's rubbing shoulders with everybody. Nobody's superior than the next person because when you're on the subway, everybody's smelling the pee together, Okay. Everybody's watching the rats run around, drag a slice of pizza, okay? And you're trying to dodge the rat because you don't want it coming near you, okay? I mean, that's that's the reality of New York City. But Los Angeles is a very different animal. Uh, and if you've never lived in L.A. or haven't visited L.A., L.A. has a very quiet kind of a, although we are a blue state, California is a blue state, um, and L.A. County is a blue county, we still have like this quiet undertones of racism where people are liberal to your face or they're liberals in their cars, a liberal liberals, you know, when they're talking to you, but when they go into their cars and lock the car, um, it's a different person. They have very, you know, strong, different points of view that are not very uh, diversity friendly. Okay. I experienced such the experience. I had such experience uh, at the Beverly center a few years ago. Uh, I was, uh, you know, as a person of color, just, uh, uh, first of all, I never looked at myself as like, I don't wear the hijab. Uh, I don't wear the burqa. I don't, uh, you know, dress up in, you know, traditional garb. Uh, so uh, this was a very, very strange thing for me, um, where I, ex- I experienced a very hardcore experience of racism uh, at the Beverly Center where when I got attacked, I had to eventually end up getting a neck surgery, uh, which you'll see a little cut here where I had to get a disc replacement in my neck uh, because I was attacked by this crazy white lady. Um, So this is what happened. I was at the Beverly Center. Uh, I am, you know, walking through the parking lot, minding my own damn business. Uh, And all of a sudden I hear this lady, okay, probably in her like late thirties, you know, scream out to me. And she's like, you're all terrorists. And I was just like, I know this bitch isn't talking to me. Cause I, what the fuck did you talk about? Like you're all terrorists. I was like, I don't, I don't look like a terrorist. First of all, terrorists would never hire me cause I'm attractive. Okay. Terrorists never hire attractive people. Have you seen the terrorists for ISIS and Al Qaeda and Taliban? Those motherfuckers are ugly as fuck. Okay. Because most of the time, the, 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 the only the fucking ugly people that they hire, they're the only ones who are going to kill themselves with a promise of getting ass in heaven because God knows they're not getting any ass here. OK, and I know some people might get offended by that and get, you know, but I don't give a fuck. These people are fucking terrorists who are looking to fucking kill people like you and me. So fuck them. OK, but so I'm just like, wait, what? What is she talking about? And so she's like, you heard me. You're all terrorists. Right. And I was like, oh, what? what's going on? 
I was like, you're not, you're not talking to me. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fucking talking to you. And walks up to me and like takes a Taibo stance. Now understand that she has three kids with her from the ages of seven to maybe up to 12. Okay. And they're all boys. She's a white lady. Um, and she takes a typo stand and then she kicks me in the shin. And I'm like, wow. I go back, I shove her back. Okay. And and I'm like, I'm saying to myself, oh my God, like a fight is about to go down. We're gonna like fuck some fuck some shit up right now. Cause she fucking physically attacked me. Okay. Um, now I'm standing there and she's take she get gets into a typo stance, and I was like, I don't know, typo was still so much in trend. Like this bitch is taking a lot of typo classes, okay. Um, and then she swings her, she takes a punch at me. She's trying to like fucking, you know, side punch me in my head. So I duck and my hair was down. So she grabbed me by my hair, got me in a headlock and started yanking my neck. As she's yanking my neck, she herniates a disc in my neck. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm there and I'm in a headlock and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. All these people are watching and nobody's coming forward to break up this fight. Okay, nobody's coming forward. As a matter of fact, I see these two young guys. We are we are literally waiting at the uh you know we're 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 in we're in our car we're you know get out of our car and people are behind us and they're watching this whole fucking fight go down. I see these two guys in their car watching us like it's a wet t-shirt contest or some shit. Okay, they don't step out to break up the fight. The only person who stepped out of the car to come and break up this fight was a black dude. That is a fucking true story, okay? This black dude stepped in and broke up the fight. And thank God for that, brother, for breaking up the fight, okay? Long story short, they dragged this case on for a year. Now, let me tell you who called the cops. I didn't even call the cops because she very quickly got in the car and took off. So I didn't get her plate number. But who did get her plate number was this other white lady who was watching this fight, okay? Picked, picked up the phone, called the police, and said, this woman, meaning me, just got assaulted by this crazy white woman who was hitting her and calling her a terrorist. Uh, and by the way, while she, the, when she had me in a headlock and she was yanking my neck, her children were cheering her on and saying, your kind shouldn't be here. Yes, she teaches her children this level of racism, which tells you that racism is not something we are born with. You teach that hateful shit to your kids. And that's what this woman has done. She's poisoned her poor children's minds, okay? And these children were looking at me. They were like, we should call the FBI on you. Yeah, you're a terrorist. Like, imagine little kids saying that to you while this woman is fucking assaulting me, okay? Finally... I call the cops. The cops show up like 30 minutes later. We're in the middle of fucking Beverly Hills, okay? Finally, the cops show up. They're like, what happened, ma'am? I described to them. I had like bruises and scratches on my arm. My neck was killing me uh, because I didn't know back then at that moment that she had herniated a disc. I was was in so much pain. And then finally, uh, you know, the cops come and I give them the report. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They take the report down. Like two days later... Uh, the detective calls me, who's also a, a you know, a, a black guy. I go down to meet this detective um, and we sit down and we start talking and he goes, uh, can you describe to me what happened? So I start describing to him exactly what happened. And he goes, ma'am, half the stuff you're telling me is not in the report. Now, I very remember, specifically remember, because that happened to me right there and then, that everything was so fresh in my mind. There's no fucking way that I missed out on those details. I told those details. I showed the gash. I was like, hey, I was like, do you not have any mention in the report of how this woman attacked me and I have scars and scratches and pain in my neck? And they were like, no, there's no such mention. How interesting. So the black cop goes, okay. He's like, I'm going to go get a camera. I'll be right back. He comes back. And he takes pictures of the bruises and everything. And he goes, ma'am, this case is going to go to, you know, is going to go to a mediator and they're going to decide if they're going to pursue, if the state is going to press charges against her. Okay. So then they're like, oh, we're going to bring her down to the station and we're going to hear her side of the story. Okay. So they brought her down to the station, heard her side of the story, and it went to a mediator. The case dragged on for one whole year. Okay. These people would never call me back. They would never follow up with me. I would constantly have to... um um, you know, follow up with them to be like, what's going on with the case? They're like, call us next week. What's going on with the case? Call call us next week. For a year, this dragged on, okay? Now, mind you, they the, the, the parking structure had cameras, so they were subpoenaed to give the tape up by law because they wanted to see what the hell happened and who started the fight and all that good stuff. 
the tape clearly shows this woman attacking me. Now, there is no sound. There's only physical that you can see what's happening. It's black and white. The security guard was not present at the time. He was at a lunch break or whatever the fuck he was. Okay. And this case dragged on for one whole year. And I shit you not. Okay. The state of California said to me in the process that because I was a victim of a hate crime, because I told them the kind of racist shit she was spewing at me at the time, that it was racist and it was racially driven, that the state of California came out and said that they were going to pick up the tab on my medical expenses. Okay. They didn't pick up any tabs on me throughout the year. They said, we're waiting for the result of what the criminal charges are going to be. And at the end, I am so like infuriated to even think about this. They let this woman go. They let this woman go, not even a slap on her hand. They let this woman go without pressing any kind of charges on her. And I asked them and I was like, on what basis are you let this woman, are you letting this woman go? They said, we don't have enough evidence to charge her. What other evidence would you need when the whole thing is caught on tape where she comes and assaults me and attacks me? And they're like, yeah, but what we, what the thing is that with hate crime, it has to be very specific. If there was sound, if there was a sound on the camera where we could hear her spewing these racial slurs at you, then it would constitute as a hate crime. But besides that, and I was like, what about the fact that she came and attacked me? They're like, yeah, I mean, we can see it on the camera, but it's not that clear. They let this woman go. And then the state of California came to me and said, sorry, since the charges were dropped, we will not be picking up any medical expenses on you. Okay. I had to pay not only live with the injustice of it all. I had to live with, I didn't sleep pretty much for the next five years because it was in so much pain. My herniation got so bad at one point that I I was losing motor skills in my right arm and I had to have an emergency surgery where they cut me open and replaced my disc because my disc was so severely herniated that they put a metal disc in my neck, okay? And now I am bionic because of it. That's right. So every time I go through the metal detector at the airport, shit's popping off, okay? Shit's going off because I am bionic. I'm just kidding. I'm not bionic. I wish I was. I, I wish it gave me that kind of powers. It didn't. But I'm talking about injustice, okay? That's just injustice, experienced by a not by a person of color woman against versus a white woman and I thought about it and I was just like man what if it was me who had attacked her what if it was me spewing this kind of racial shit at her they would probably not only throw my ass in jail for life but they probably freeze all my assets they probably go after my family they probably try to make connections of me of being fucking you know connected to ISIS or al-Qaeda or Taliban or some shit okay But this is the difference of justice. This is the difference of the justice system in America for a person of color versus a white person, okay? I can say that because I firsthand fucking experienced this shit, okay? Now, we're going to juxtaposition this against a few years after all that shit happened, okay? I uh, had, I got a letter in the mail saying that I had apparently hit and ran some woman's car. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? There's not a single scratch on my car. You can come and look at my car. There is no scratches. If I hit and ran somebody, there should be scratches on my car. They're like, no, no, this lady is adamant that you hit and ran her car and we have to come and see the car. Okay. I go to the, you know, I call up the police station and I'm like, what's going on? The detective was like, well, you know, first I thought it was a scam. And I was like, this sounds like a scam, sir. Because he was just like, give me your plate number. Give me your social security. Give me your address. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm not giving you any of my information. I need to know who the fuck you are. Okay. I later found out that it was a legit case. So I hired a lawyer. Okay. And uh, they contacted this person. Okay. Um, and the lawyer ended up screwing me over <laughs> and keeping my money, kept my money and didn't do the job. So that was another shit. So then I was like, oh, fuck. So I go to court and uh, they provide me with a lawyer. The state provided me with a lawyer um, and we continued the case. So I'm like, hey, can I get audio 
of her complaining at the time that she claims that I hit her car. You know where I was? I was in Burbank at the time at Flappers Comedy Club. I had just done the show and I was going back home. And she claims that on my way into the comedy club, I had hit her car. She accused me of a hit and run, okay? I, at the time, drove a brand new white BMW. You know what she drove? A shitty fucking beat down, some pathfinder, some bullshit car. And she's a white woman who's an actress of apparently of some kind. And I looked at her Instagram and all she has is just every picture of her is pretty much nude. And God bless if that's your jam. But that's what I came across. And I was like, okay. They dragged the case on and the state was like, nope. We heard the tape. And I was like, does she have any witnesses? She's like, no, I have no witnesses. Does she have a video of this, me hitting and run? No video of hit and run. Do you? Did you take a picture of my plate number? No, I did not take a picture of your plate number. Okay, then how the fuck did you remember my plate number? Well, I just remembered your plate number because you hit and ran my car. Uh-huh, okay. So I'm like, all right, can I hear the audio? of when she called the cops so I can I can hear the audio of it so the I hear listen to the audio and the cop is literally telling her he's like ma'am there is no damage on your car there is like nothing to report here I don't know what you want me to do and she's like no I still want you to make that report and he's like ma'am there is like literally nothing are you physically damaged she's like no he's like is your car damaged she's like no not really she's like the cop is like well ma'am I don't know what is it that you want me to report Okay, it, this is on the fucking 911 call, okay? So I'm talking to the court, uh, to my lawyer, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? And they were like, well, you they're giving you two options. Either you plead no contest, okay, and pay for the damage of the car. There was no damage to the fucking car. It's a shitty ass beat up fucking 98 Pathfinder, okay? Or we take this to court, we take this to trial, Okay, they had no problem taking this to trial, by the way, no problem. Understand this is a is a this is a case of a white woman accusing a brown woman. Okay, of a hidden a bullshit ass hit and run versus a brown woman versus a white woman that a brown woman got attacked by a white woman. And she fucking walked free when everything was caught on camera. I want you to pay attention to the fucking fucked up ass injustice system of what we have in place, which is why the revolution is taking place the way it is. Okay. This fucking bitch, this fucking bitch of a woman that accused me of a hit and run. Okay. And I was like, man, listen, like I had a full-time job. Like I was already taking so much time off to go to fucking all these bullshit ass court hearings. And I was like, if this goes to trial, like I'll just get fired. Like I'm going to be fucking homeless. I wouldn't have, I won't be able to sustain a job. Like I can't go like, cause you constantly have to make these appearances. You've gone for a number of hours. Like no job is going to be, is going to tolerate that. Now this bitch doesn't have a job. Okay. She's married to some dude who picks up the tab on her. Okay. I don't have that luxury. I make my own money and I don't have a dude to pick up the fucking tab on me. Okay. This woman got her way. And I was like, listen, can I just fucking plead? No contest. Tell me what it is. I don't have the bandwidth. I don't have the financial means to fight this woman and to go for the case to go on trial for a bullshit ass charge where she has no basis. She has no basis. There is no audio. There's no video. There's no pictures. There's no physical damage to her. There's no physical damage to the car. How how is she able to fight this? How is the court taking her word over mine? How is this happening? But it's happening because she has the skin tone for it, and I fucking don't, okay? This is not a, 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 a rant about being a victim, okay? This is a rant about being the fucking injustice of this shit, okay? I'm not a, I'm not a fucking victim, okay? Maybe I am a victim to the shit that happened, but I don't, you know, I'm not looking at it. I'm looking at the fucking injustice of it all, okay? You know what was the bill that she submitted to court for the cost of the damage, apparently, that I cost, cost, that that I caused to her car? $500. $500. And that was pushing it, okay? I wrote a $500 check. I don't know, like, here's a fucking $500 check. I hope you fucking choke on it. I hope you actually get in a fucking hit and run and you fucking get damaged really severely. Go fuck yourself. Okay. 
I gave her that. But you know what happens? That shit stays on my fucking record. Okay? I pleaded no contest to it. Because I didn't have the fucking bandwidth to go and fight for it in court. That's on my that's on my record now. Because this bitch claimed that this is what I did to her. But the other white bitch who fucking ripped my fucking neck off walks free to this day with not even a slap on her hand. This is the level of injustice we're talking here, okay? And now you take that up a hundred fucking notches to what happened to George Floyd and to what happened to Breonna Taylor and what happened to Ahmaud Arbery. And that shit is fucking sickening. And those are just like three names of the hundreds of uh, black men and women that have been killed at the hands of police brutality. This is a firsthand account that I'm giving you right now. Okay, and I'm not even black. And this is the kind of shit that's happening to people of color right here in America. I understand the plight of how black men and women get treated in America. I I am fucking down for it. I am down for the cause. Now, going back to Dave Chappelle calling Candace Owens, pussy, stinky. He said, Candace Owens has a stinky pussy. Okay. I don't know. I don't think he knows it either. I don't think he's ever had access to it. So I don't know how he's making that claim. But I don't know if you guys know who Candace Owens is. Candace Owens is a conservative, uh, you know, she's a, she's a, she's a conservative uh, political person who... Uh, has a uh, uh, who used to be totally against um, she, she used to be totally against Trump, uh, totally against uh, you know uh, the Republican Party, and then became uh, in, uh, then turned kind of turned uh, you know turned over in, in 2016 and became critical of Black Lives Matter and of the Democratic Party and started became became a conservative uh, you know became part of the uh, conservative advocacy group called Turning Point USA. Um, and now she's their communications director. Okay. I am personally not also a fan of Candace Owens, uh, because I think she does false comparisons. She was talking about how George Floyd had a criminal background and he was not such an innocent soul. Um, you know, and we should really also look at that and look, he, I'm not, Maybe he had a record and I've seen some of the, the, you know, the charges that they were talking about of things that he was on, but the man got killed at the hand of the police when he wasn't doing nothing. Like he was accused of a $20 fake bill, but nobody should lose their fucking lives over it. Our politicians go and steal money from us. And get in bed with big farmers and big oil companies. And I don't see a cop putting their neck over, put, putting their knee over their neck to fucking choke him and kill him to death. So how are you going to kill a 20, a man, a black man over a fake $20 bill and say that's justified? I'm sorry, Candace, you're fucking wrong. You're out of your fucking mind to make that kind of fucking comparison. You're really out of your mind. Okay, what about Breonna Taylor? She was just sleeping in her bed. She was, she was an EMT worker, for God's sake. She was sleeping in her bed. Like, are we not even safe in our own homes? Like, you can't even sleep without a cop coming in and fucking killing you? I am not. I know I'm going to get. I know that Candace Owens has sold her soul to the devil. Okay, I'm aware of that. Um, Because she, because just, you know, she, because Dave, Look, I'm gonna get a pop, probably in a lot of trouble for this. Okay, I let me let me say this by disclosure by saying I love Dave Chappelle and I have loved what he has done in the past and you know what he continues to talk about. But there are some things I am not down for what Dave says. I'm just fucking not. Okay, and the reason there is no opposing or challenging voice to Dave Chappelle because there aren't any female comics on that level of success you know, who are going to come and oppose him, especially women of color, okay? I mean, Ellen is very successful. Ellen's a female comic, but she's white, and she's also gay. So I don't know how much she kind of can come and oppose Dave Chappelle without being, you know, chastised for stuff. 
But if you are a woman of color, especially a black, you know, you a black or, a, you know, brown woman of color who's a female comic, you have maybe a little bit more weight to come out and give an opposing point of view uh, and challenge Dave Chappelle or any other male comic for that matter, you know, on their stances about certain things. Calling Candace Owens to say that she has a stinky pussy, I have never once heard Dave Chappelle call out Trump's mushroom dick. Have you? He ne- It's never sexually demeaning. With women, it's always sexually demeaning, right? Male comics always use the sexual power of sexually demeaning us. And it's not just for fellow female comics. It's just for women in general, which is what Dave Chappelle has exercised, you know, in his latest special. Candace Owens has a stinky pussy. You won the fucking Mark Twain prize for comedy, man. I'm sure you can come up with a better joke. I'm sure you can come write a better joke than that, than saying Candace Owens has a stinky pussy. To me, Candace Owens looks like the goddamn Manchurian candidate, okay? She's got that crazy glaze in her eyes. It's the same shit as the victims uh, in the movie Get Out. Same fucking crazy glaze, same like that. Not feeling nothing. To me, that's what she looks like, okay? I don't need to go and sexually demean um, Candace Owens, you know, to make my point about me not liking her. Okay. I think Candace Owens has, has a lot of fucking emotional problems. I don't think she, her husband, have you seen her husband? He looks like Hitler's wet dream. He fucking literally does. I saw him and I was like, Jesus, I was like, if Hitler was alive today, he, you know, this guy would be a fucking general on his, you know, on his fucking uh, Nazi military. Uh, I looked and to me, I don't know, you can make, to me, you can make fucking, you have to understand, like, women in general are just constantly being sexually demeaned ever since we become aware of our sexuality. Ever since we become aware of our, the moment we start developing breasts and start getting periods, we are Im- immediately just kind of aware of our sexuality and how we're looked at. And the kind of sexually demeaning looks and comments and the microaggressions toward us, we become very fucking sensitive, susceptible to that shit. Okay. So when you take that shit on a bigger stage, like, uh, you know, the way Dave Chappelle has, you know, and Dave Chappelle doesn't have a challenging point of view, uh, you know, by there is no, because there is no female George Carlin. There is no female Dave Chappelle. There is no female Chris Rock. There isn't. There just isn't. Nobody's going to come and challenge them. There's, you know, nobody's going to go and challenge Dave Chappelle because he's fucking Dave Chappelle, okay? Without fucking getting eaten alive by his, by his followers and by his fans, okay? I also happen to be a fan of Chappelle, but there are some things I just don't fucking agree with. I just don't, okay? He's talking about her stinky pussy. And look, I any sensible person has you know, beef with Candace Owens, okay? Nobody's nobody's, de- nobody's denying that for one second. But I think when you start getting sexually demeaning towards a woman to make a point as a man, and you kind of have that power that I don't, I if you're going to be sexually demeaning towards Candace Owens, but then I want to hear Dave, Dave Chappelle also be sexually demeaning towards Trump. And I've never once fucking heard him ever be sexually demeaning towards Trump ever or any male politician for that matter or any other male for that matter that he doesn't agree with period with only with women there's always the sexual aspect right there's always that sexual power to fucking exercise it to demean that woman down by it Candace Owens is Candace Owens is a smart woman she's not fucking stupid okay she's not a fucking idiot she's not a dummy you may not agree with her point of views but she's not some fucking dummy who doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about. She knows exactly what the fuck she's talking about. She knows where her bread and butter is, okay? But to me, every time a male comic consistently comes at... I mean, Dave Chappelle is always... I mean, if you watch his specials and his older stuff and fucking... I've loved it. It's fucking funny and I love the Chappelle show. But there's always... He's just constantly talking about women's pussies, you know? Versus that point of view and, you know, it's just, it's just always about talking about women's pussies and women's bodies. Like, they're like his fucking entities. They're like this, they're they're possessions. We're not your fucking possessions. Okay. We are our own people. Okay. We're, you, you know that you have that power over us, that sexual power. Society has given you that sexual power over us. We don't have that kind of thing. We can make a dick joke. 
you know, or say, ah, oh, this person has a small dick, or we can say, like, oh, Trump has a small penis, ha, ha, ha. And people might come out and say, hey, man, you make sexual, you make sexual jokes at Donald Trump, you know, about, you know, talking about his small penis or his orange penis or whatever. And you're right, I do. But that's not the same as somebody like Candace Owens or any other woman for that matter, getting fucking rape threats and then getting death threats. Trump probably just get fucking, if he got, gets death threats, that is, or somebody makes fun of his fucking side of his dick or the color of his dick, that's a different story, okay? But he's not getting rape threats. Nobody's saying, oh, I'm gonna fucking fuck you first against your will, and then I'm gonna fucking kill you. There's always the sexual angle with women. Always. It never fucking goes away. Never. It's there since the beginning of goddamn time, okay? It's just fucking there. And we have male comics now who have such huge platforms and huge followings and get paid big fucking bucks, okay? Who are totally comfortable with standing up there, you know, and making and continuing and perpetuating that to say that sexual violence towards women is acceptable, especially women that I don't agree with. I'm sorry, Dave. I love you, but it's not. It's not fucking cool. And I don't agree with it. I don't fucking like Candace Owens. And I know I'm going to get a lot of shit for this. I know I'm so no people are going to come at me. They're like, fuck you, Mona. I don't fucking like this. Dave's great. And he's brilliant. Yes, he is. And I'm not denying that. But he's also a human being who's also flawed. Okay. And this might be his flaw, that he is constantly coming out and taking power, taking sexual power and demeaning women with it, because that's an, that's an easy, low-hanging fruit he can do, okay? I think Dave Chappelle can do better. He won a fucking Mark Twain Prize. He can do way better than that, okay? And until we have our female Carlin and female Chappelle and female Chris Rock and, you know, uh, female Lenny Bruce, we're going to keep hearing this kind of shit on stage. All the time. Look, as as female comics, we are constantly dodging whenever we go to shows or we go to comedy clubs because we have predator like male comics, predator audience members who are looking at us as these sexual objects that they want to fuck and they want to touch us and kiss us and fucking do whatever the fuck they want with us. I'm sorry, we're not your fucking possessions. We're just not. OK, you don't you don't just fucking go on stage. And, you know, I was watching his Mark Twain special and you guys should watch it. I encourage you to watch it on Netflix and he goes up there and look. Comics have you can talk about whatever the fuck you want. You really can. OK, but there's also a certain level of backlash that comes with when you talk about certain shit and when you overstep your fucking boundaries. OK, and he goes on stage and he says, oh, Ellen DeGeneres used to be here. You know, we were like, who's that dyke? Really? Like, she didn't fucking suffer enough. She didn't suffer enough for being gay, being the first fucking gay woman to come out on TV uh, and to bear that brunt and not have a career for a long time. No, that's that's not something that you can possibly relate to or some possibly maybe have compassion for. She came up with you. She came up at the same time as you and faced a lot of prejudice, you know, immense amount of prejudice. That's something that I'm sure, Dave, you can relate to as a black man to a certain level. No? Prejudice? I don't know, man. Um, Sexual jokes on men don't land the same way they land on women. They just don't, okay? I can go up on stage and I can talk about uh, a male comic that I don't like, and I'm like, that male comic has a small dick, you know, uh, and he fucking, you know, wets his bed, uh, you know, uh, and uh, he probably probably can't get laid, so he probably sucks his own dick. And people would be like, ha, 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 that's funny, that's funny. Then a male comic can go up there, oh, man, he'd be like, oh, shit, that Mona chick? Oh, man, I'd like to. I'd like to take her fucking jeans off. I'd like to fuck her in a way I'd never fuck nobody. That's very fucking different. Has a massive amount of difference. I can't, like, if I was to go up on stage and I'm like, man, that male comic, I'd love to fucking take his pants off. I'd like to fuck the shit out of him. People would be like, yeah. People were like, yeah, fucking, oh my God. Even the male comic would be like, yes, I would love that. I would love for Mona to take my pants off and fuck the shit out of me. It doesn't fucking land the same way, you guys. It just doesn't, okay? Women, we are uh, designed, our body parts are designed by God, by nature, uh, to be uh, members of insertion, okay? Um, 
Uh, we don't have sexual organs to insert somebody with. We don't have that. We are uh, naturally put at this, uh, you know, on a biological level, born with these body parts that put us in a vulnerable spot. We just are. And then when people like Dave Chappelle, who are people in positions of power and comics in position of power, and then they come and exercise that low-hanging fruit and exercise that sexual demeaning, it doesn't help. It doesn't help us. It doesn't empower us in any fucking way. It disempowers us. And that's my beef with what Chappelle said about Candace Owens and about, in general, about women, the way he talks about women. I don't know if you ever watch his special, if you watch his specials and watch the women in the front row, especially his latest ones, the Stick and Stone, Sticks and Stones, where he's making a lot of transphobic jokes. Watch the women. They are so uncomfortable. They're so uncomfortable. They're uncomfortable because... Nobody's there to fucking oppose Chappelle. Who's going to stand up to Chappelle? Who's going to... Listen, I'm... Again, I'm going to probably get into a lot of shit for saying this. But who's going to stand up to Dave Chappelle? There is no female Dave Chappelle. Not on that level. We just don't have them. In 2016, when uh, uh, when the elections were happening, uh, uh, you know, Dave Chappelle came out and talked about Hillary Clinton, how he didn't trust her. He didn't like her. He didn't trust her. He was like, she doesn't, doesn't, doesn't sit right with me. And he went on and on about, you know, and he made a comparison. Um, he made, he, he compared voting for Hillary as if he, he said voting for Hillary is having sex with Halle Berry while she farts in my face. He's like, he's like, I'm still going to go for it, but I wish she hadn't done that thing. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He's talking about demeaning two women at the exact same time. Halle Berry and Hillary Clinton using sexual references to demean them at the exact same time. That's the fucking power that male comics have that we as female comics kind of don't. That kind of sexual power. We try to have, we try to sling dick jokes. We like pussy jokes. We like good pussy jokes. Everybody likes a good dick and pussy joke. Okay. But that using of that sexual power to demean it, that's, that's kind of shit I'm not down for. I'm just not because I also experience it. I don't know. Maybe he's misogynistic. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's subconsciously misogynistic. Or maybe he's consciously misogynistic. I'm not sure. Okay. But his comedy makes it pretty clear when you watch it where uh, Dave Chappelle gets very, very sexual towards women and being very sexually demeaning. And he, perpetu- he it's perpetuated in, in pretty much all his shows. Um, and it has been throughout his comedy career. And he's applauded for it and never challenged. Because again, there is no female Dave Chappelle. There is no female George Carlin. And I'm going to fucking keep saying it. There is no female Lenny Bruce. There is no female Chris Rock. Who's going to challenge him? Nobody. So people just laugh and women get uncomfortable and fold their arms and not agree with it and probably have the same thoughts as I do right now. But what are they going to say? You know, they're on the audience. They, they, they're with their boyfriends who are laughing their asses off or their husbands and enjoying that moment. And, and you know, they don't want to spoil the mood. Oh, don't. Oh, come on. Have a sense of humor. You know, that's what guys tell you. Have a sense of humor. Come on. He's only kidding. He's only joking. It's not a big deal. You know, he's just joking about sexually demeaning women and having, you know, or having some kind of sexual violence being, you know, thrown at women. But he's just joking. Come on, have a sense of humor. Oh, you're so uptight. You're so uptight. Oh, oh, you're a comic. Oh, you're so, as, me as a female comic. Oh, you're a female comic. Oh, you're so uptight. You know, oh, gr- oh laugh a little. Learn to laugh. Oh, it's not really a fucking laughing matter now, is it? You know, when you, when you try to bring that shit home, I don't think you'll, you'll like it. Dave has a daughter, you know, and I don't mean to bring his daughter or his wife into it. But when that shit starts to come home, things are not that funny, you know. But when they go to somebody else's home, they're fucking hilarious. Shit's hilarious when bad shit happens to other people. But when it happens to you, it's not so fucking funny. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I'm going to start wrapping this up. I know that... Uh, some people might come out and construe this as me putting sexism ahead of racism. And I'm not, that's not what I'm doing. Okay. I'm not doing that in the slightest of racism is a very valid thing. I, I talked about my two stories about, you know, experiencing racism firsthand, but I also experienced sexism and not just in 
comedy clubs, but even in regular life, you know, you walk down, uh, you walk down construction sites or, you know, the guy is like, hey, hey, baby, hey, nice pants. You guys are looking good. Oh, I like them titties. You know, we're just, we're there for fucking people's commentary. Like our body parts are like there for people's commentary. It's fucking bullshit, you know? But I, although I must confess, as I, as I get older, um, as, a, as, as a woman who is no longer in her 20s, I'm kind of welcoming those compliments nowadays because I need them. Because God knows I'm not getting them on Tinder or Bumble on Hinge or any of these godforsaken dating apps because they fucking suck. Um, but uh, all joking aside, it's fucking, you know, you kind of kind of try to get the, the, the construction workers to look at you and be like, oh, just, am I still looking good? How am I looking, sir? You like it? You know, but those compliments are going down. They're not, uh, they're not as, uh, they're not as, uh, prevalent as they used to be, if I may say so. Um, but, uh, I think, uh, Dave Chappelle has uh, done brilliant work and I, and I love him for it. Um, but there are some things I am just not down for, for what Dave Chappelle talks about. Um, if you look at, I'm going to end with this. Okay. If you look at your top, 10 comedians on Forbes list. Okay. And Google it if you can. There's not a single female comic up there. Not a single. I don't even think Ellen's on there. It's all guys because it's the boys club. It's one giant boys club. And when there's one giant boys club, there are no female opposing voices to challenge you on your uh, stereotypes, on your, on your bullshit that you're perpetuating against women because you know, you're sitting on the top 10 Forbes list. Who's going to come and challenge you, right? Without getting booed or without getting demeaned, uh, which is probably the shit that's coming my way once this, once you know, this gets posted and people listen to it. Oh, you're wrong, Mona. You're wrong. He's not, he's not misogynistic. He's not sexist. Maybe. Or maybe he is, you know, consciously or subconsciously. But I think Dave is indeed brilliant at what he does. There's no denying about that. But some of his perspectives and some of his point of view on women are fucked up. And I think it's time that sh- that shit starts that that shit has to start to change, okay? I want to see women up in the top 10 Forbes list because we fucking deserve it, okay? I want to be in the top 10 Forbes list, okay? I want to uh I want to do this on a major stage and talk about these topics on a major stage. Why not? They need to be talked about. They're very they're very present, they're very valid, uh they're very current. So I want to be able to talk about it. So I'm trying to do that by doing these uh, YouTube and Facebook lives and have these conversations this way. And uh, hopefully someone sensible will come along and try to give me a bigger platform so I can come out and talk about this. Um, Tim, thank you very much for joining. Uh, Some people came, some people went. Thank you very much, Tim. I appreciate that. Much love. Thank you very much, uh, uh, James, thank you for the claps and thank you. Um, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Um, and if you guys, uh, want to do a donate and you like my rants and I'm again, I'm doing the 30 day challenge. I'll be here every weekday between six and 8 PM Pacific. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. If you want to share it on your Facebook, or if you want to share it on, you know, share it on your social media, please go right ahead. That would mean the world to me. Uh, and if you want to tag me, you're more than to, welcome to do that. And it would mean the world to me. And if you guys like what I'm doing, you guys can uh, Venmo me if you like, uh, whatever you can spare. Uh, that would be amazing. Or you can PayPal me since I don't get paid the way Dave Chappelle does. Um, that would be uh, pretty amazing. Um, and uh, I love you guys. Have a lovely weekend. I put my Venmo and my PayPal in for you guys if you guys want to give some money. Uh, I appreciate you, but I will see you on Monday. Stay safe. Have a great weekend. Love you guys. Drink some tequila. Have a great time because God knows I will. Have a good night.